country of Kenya has one of the largest economies in East Africa, but despite impressive growth rates in recent years, poverty and hunger are still soaring. Half a century after the country's independence in 1963, nearly half of 44 million Kenyans still count as poor and suffer from different forms of malnutrition. Our challenge here is food security. And if it is food security, how are we getting our community food secure? We are suffering from food shortage and particularly shortage of what we call macronutrients, but also micronutrients. Shortage of micronutrients is called hidden hunger and describes deficits of vitamins, proteins and essential minerals crucial for the human body to function properly. Shortage of macronutrients describes a quantitative lack of food required to keep a human alive. While these problems are quite prevalent, Kenya's agricultural biodiversity could significantly contribute to the resolution of the problem. This potential has been unused for a long time, but recently many Kenyan farmers in the western and central regions of the country have begun to resurrect this capacity. A group of almost forgotten plants, as ancient as farming in Africa itself, experiences a renaissance. African indigenous vegetables, in short, AIVs. In this film, we are going to learn about the combined features of these interesting plants. We'll show how they are promoted, researched and distributed through a new German-Kenyan cooperation project between scientists, farmers and politicians. We are also going to visit a farming community in the western Kenyan region of Kakamega, the place where AIVs have been resurrected, and show why these fascinating species are the fittest to solve the food crisis in Kenya. Kakamega is a distinctly rural region in western Kenya, close to Lake Victoria, about 30 kilometers north of the equator. Kakamega town, the district capital, has a population of about 100,000, and it is the capital of Kakamega County, one of 47 administrative units in Kenya. This county is one of Kenya's most populous. Only 15% of the population lives in cities, and most people depend on farming for their livelihood. The local markets are full of fresh produce. Also, AIVs are frequently found at the stands, which are grown by farmers like Josephine. I was born in 1956. I was in school till class 6, but I couldn't go further because of tuition fees. My husband had a small job as a day worker. It was not a full-time job. Since a salaried job is difficult to survive on, I ventured into business because I had to wait until the end of a month for my husband to send me money. I continued in business while my husband worked as a day worker. We got a little money from business and a little from day work. Farming provides the basis for subsistence for the majority of the population in western Kenya. Production of AIVs is a fairly new development. Until not long ago, the main products of Kenyan agriculture were not indigenous, but, from Kenya's point of view, exotic crops, like tomatoes or kales. Indigenous vegetables were considered out of fashion, poor man's food that could be only used as a last resort. At some point, I think there was just some... Um uh, there was no knowledge at all. There was uh, when the when the exotic vegetables were coming in now, and people just went, you know, and dis disregarded the African indigenous vegetables and just left them all together. So things really changed, and um, the value of the African indigenous indigenous vegetables was also di di discarded, and therefore there was a gap. Kenya's current agricultural policies are still inherited from colonial times and continue to promote high-value export crops, including exotic vegetables. The politicians continue the support for large-scale commercial production of export-oriented crops. There is still no clear focus in Kenyan agricultural policies on using the potential of local crops produced by thousands of small-scale subsistence farmers like Josephine or Necheza to combat hidden hunger. The history of development of uh um, agriculture in Kenya goes back to the colonial period. 
and this is where um, a European farmer settled in Kenya and uh, the whole idea was uh, to develop agriculture uh, for the purpose of um, the economic development of their mother countries. But this has begun to change. Universal availability of AIVs at local as well as urban markets is a fairly recent development. We are seeing more and more people embracing uh, local vegetables and even local foods in general. Um, but that has not come easy. It's, it's, it's a result of a big, big campaign which many institutions in the country and from outside have also been carrying out to um, create awareness about the, the, the nutritional value of this and the role it can play in, um, in, in our bodies. Dr. Maundu has led one of these campaigns for the NGO Bioversity International in collaboration with the Kenyan Ministries of Agriculture and Health. Government experts estimate that increasing urbanization will require more commercialized production of AIVs, not only to alleviate food security, but also due to the economic benefits for poverty-stricken smallholder farmers like Josephine. After planting something, you will find people coming to buy the produce from your farm. The community becomes aware that when you go here or there, you get this and that. Recent research results show that many AIVs can be used for medical treatments and it's quite insightful to compare nutrient contents of African indigenous vegetables to exotic vegetables. African nightshade contains more than four times as much vitamin C than common spinach and is used to ease chest pains and treat memory loss. Spider plant is much richer in protein than common lettuce and is used for treatment against anema called shortage of blood by the locals. Amaranth contains up to 10 times more calcium than cabbage, its exotic equivalent. It is also rich in phosphorus and other vitamins. But the health properties of AIVs go further than that. Recent studies have already shown that using indigenous vegetables improves the treatment of diabetes, gout, hyperlipidemia, intestinal infections and protozoan parasites. Further research is required to investigate the medicinal use of AIVs for HIV and many other diseases. More than enough reasons to research and promote these plants so they can reach a larger amount of people. The production is still low because uh, we need to produce adequate amounts to supply the 40 million Kenyans to eat these vegetables. So we need to boost the production, the productivity and having more farmers producing not just uh, for home consumption, but for the local market and later maybe for even the export market to bring in money for improving the livelihoods. But in order to achieve that, a broad range of problems need solutions. Inputs for production still have a high price tag. Water is generally scarce. The quality of seeds is low. Processing of the plants is poorly developed. The technology for pest and disease management is inadequate. Lack of cold storage facilities leads to harvest losses of up to 50%. Post-harvest handling techniques are inefficient. The overall infrastructure is underdeveloped. And lastly, local and urban markets are not effective enough. Consequently, New, holistic strategies are required to improve the performance of AIVs. One important actor who works on this is the Kenyan-German research project Horton Lea, short for Horticultural Innovations and Learning for Improved Nutrition and Livelihood in East Africa. It is funded by the German Federal Ministry for Education and Research and the Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development, with strong cooperation between German and Kenyan universities at its centre. Professor Mary Abukutsa Onyango is a famous and successful promoter of AIVs. She has been one of the most important driving forces behind local activities in Kenya. With her partners based in more than 18 different German and Kenyan universities and well-known international research centres, she aims to develop improved varieties and to supply Kenyan farmers with high-quality and affordable seeds of AIVs. Having studied this 
promotion of African indigenous vegetables. HODLA is one of the projects that's going to come up with holistic solutions, looking at how we are going to disseminate, already disseminating what we already know and what the project's going to come up. So it's a wonderful project to promote African indigenous vegetables, among other projects that are going on in Africa and in the world. Horton Leo's holistic approach becomes obvious with a look at its organisation. It is divided into 14 sub-projects that are grouped in three main strands. One project group responsible for natural sciences, one for social and environmental sciences, and two overarching projects out of which one strives to build the capacity for long-term research by involving Kenyan postgraduate students and one to sustainably disseminate the research results to practitioners and farmers. The overall goal of Horton Leia is to improve the livelihood and nutritional situation in Kenya and East Africa. Sustainable knowledge exchange is the key component of Horton Leia. Researchers exchange knowledge with practitioners in order to develop and increase the production of AIVs. Today, AIVs are predominantly cultivated, reaped, sold and prepared by women. To avoid marginalisation in the course of increased commercial production, Horton Leia also focuses on aspects of women empowerment on the local level in Kenya. With this integrated approach that encompasses so many aspects of rural life in Kenya, substantial benefits for farmers like Josephine or her friend Necheza become very real. My vegetable farming gives me food, clothing, pen for my child, and everything even when I get a visitor. African indigenous vegetables are like medicine and also a source of vegetables which are good for our bodies. African indigenous vegetables are marketable. There is high demand now. If you plant cabbages and kales, they will not sell faster as the African indigenous vegetables. If you are sick, hospitals recommend that you eat African indigenous vegetables. African spinach, for example, is useful in treating anemia. AIVs have a short growth period, with most of them being ready for harvesting and use within three to four weeks, and respond very well to organic fertilizers. Josephine showed us how she learned to produce her own organic fertilizers. People from Kari assisted in showing us how to prepare manure that can help our African indigenous vegetables to grow well. The Kenyan Agriculture and Livestock Research Organization, CALRO, formerly CARI, is the main Kenyan parastatal organization to conduct research on these crops and to spread the knowledge to farmers. In this regard, Horton Leia is cooperating closely with CALRO to develop solutions to the problems of producing and marketing AIVs, as well as exchanging information with farmers effectively. We are expected to do interdisciplinary research, which is addressed really to the needs of local people here. So it needs communication with people on the ground in order to find out if we are on the right track and if we are doing the right thing. The internal communication between the almost 100 scientists involved in the project worldwide is another challenge that Horton Leia faces. Besides a newly established internal communication platform as part of the hortonlayer.org webpage, one of the most important communication highlights for all involved researchers is the Horton Leia annual meeting. For all the scientists involved in the Horton Leia Graduate School, the annual meeting provides the opportunity to meet in person. Especially among the 35 young East African and German PhD students, Horton Leia aims to establish durable research cooperation to jointly address food security and malnutrition challenges. If we don't have the graduate school and therefore the students don't know who is doing what project, it is very, very difficult to develop synergy. So this really is going to contribute uh, greatly to the success of the project as a whole. And also it is going to make the burden lighter for us as supervisors because now you have this cross-learning between and among students and it really brings in and enhances uh, the rate at which we are likely to finish the project. And the rate to finish the project should increase. These young researchers still have a long way to go.
I wish to point out that actually there are several indigenous vegetables in Kenya and in Africa per se. And we find out that we have only worked on a few popular ones which, are, which have indicated the potential that they have. The potential is there. Once we exploit it, it can contribute to solving the Kenyan food security and food uh, hidden hunger problems in Kenya and in Africa. In order to achieve this ultimate goal, there is a need for concerted efforts to support the use and conservation of AIVs. Cultural perceptions and trends in consumer behaviour already contribute to an increase in the demand for fresh indigenous vegetables for home consumption and restaurants. You put your vegetables in the shelves in Uchumi or in the other supermarkets, by the end of the day, the, I mean by the afternoon, uh, that supply is gone already. However, in taking advantage of the opportunities presented by the market, Josephine and other AIV farmers face several challenges. But they have support. The future of these perfectly adapted plants in Kenya and East Africa will strongly depend on the research and promotional efforts of Horton Leah and other organizations. A lot of effort is still required in this respect to solve the persistent food and nutrition crisis in Kenya. To support the farmers by dispersing the knowledge gained through research and aid with environmental protection. And to make farming worthwhile economically to alleviate poverty. However, one important question yet remains unanswered. Taste. A question that is probably on the mind of many viewers. But through extensive scientific research, we have found an answer. I personally eat a lot of African indigenous vegetables and I can tell you they are very tasty. They are very, very tasty and um, I believe that you also, if you taste these vegetables, you'd never turn back. You'll want them again and again. And the good thing is that there are, there are a variety of them, so you'd never get tired of eating them. You know, today you have a one, tomorrow you have a different type, and it's just interesting to, to, to have to prepare different types of vegetables, you know, all through the week. It is very nice. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Mwangi! Yeah, I wanna be free.